Hey, welcome back to the recap, the video podcast ministry of First Baptist Kettering, where we discuss topics such as our values, our vision as a church, and our sermons from week to week. The recap exists to present content that invites people to be transformed by Jesus. With that, let's get started. Today I'm thankful to have Pastor Chad sitting with me, and I think he's going to lead off today with the first question. And we're going to flip the script on it, on it here, and I'm going to ask you the questions. Oh boy, and I have a go. long uh, list of things. You only that get I one though. Know. You get one. Now we've been talking about some of the different things uh, that our church is about, and so mm-hmm. last week we talked about the fact that we value generational diversity. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the other things that we value is invitational community. Can you just take a minute? You're our uh, guru of all things small groups oh, discipleship equipping and talk just for a minute about uh kind of how you see that play out in our church what we do well uh how we want to engage people in that way well so uh, speaking of invitational community even last night so we finished our community group uh with a statement from the irby family they're getting ready to leave to go to another duty station and one of the things that they shared was the fact that our church welcomes new folks in really well when they arrived Everyone was very welcoming, very kind, very gracious, showed them where things were. But they also said moving from just being welcomed for the kids' ministry and being involved in ministry, they were able to plug into a group and be loved on and grow in the Word together and enjoy fellowship together and grow in their faith mutually alongside other believers. I believe invitational community is just that, where we spend time diving into God's Word together. We live life together. We celebrate life's joys We grieve life's sorrows and the sad moments in our lives, but we do life together as a community of faith. That's why God gave us the church to live life together and to be encouraged as we live this life that he's given to us. So um, that was just one practical explanation of what I believe Invitational Community is. And they really shared that last night and said, thank you so much for loving on them well. So that'd be how I see it. Yeah. So, you know, I think one of the things that some churches struggle with, and I'm Mm -hmm. sure that we've struggled with this in different groups at different times, is that you know, people want to be part of a group. But right. sometimes if you're the outsider, right, right, and you're coming into a group of people that they've already been meeting for a while or they've, you know, they've known each other for years, it's hard to kind of find your spot in there and to right. feel that. What are some ways that we want to try to develop that idea of being invitational, that we want to build into the DNA of our small groups and Sunday school classes, this this invitational community that we are literally inviting. We we want you to come and be a part. I believe it has to do with the environments we set. Um, I also think our leaders, uh, I have a, have a passion, always have since I was in youth ministry, to, to look at the empty seat as not just an empty chair, but an opportunity for someone to fill that seat, to come and hear the good news, to come and participate in the life uh, of the local church, to grow in their faith. So I would say I'm going to be leading our, our leaders to set environments that are inviting, that are open groups where folks can come and join, where uh, even though the room feels 80% full, we know it's not full. Um, For an adult, if a room is 80% full, it's at capacity. We want to create those opportunities, so increasing our number of groups that we offer, but also um, challenging our leaders and their members in our classes. When they see an empty seat, that's just the representative of someone who's not there yet. Instead of seeing it as something I have to move, let's see it as something I have the opportunity to invite somebody to. I want to bring them in. So the environment we set... The culture that's established in a group that is, that is warm and welcoming, that's engaging, that is, uh, is grace-filled when we talk to one another, but also uh, communicates truth in, in a way that is honoring to that person. So Yeah, and I think it really goes back to just the whole atmosphere that we mm-hmm. want to set, the whole culture we want to set as a church. Right, for sure. R- right, that we are, we are not a, um, that we're an externally thinking mm-hmm. church. We're thinking about lost people. We're thinking about... So easy about, to go the other way. Yeah, we're thinking about people who are not yet connected right. when we d- make decisions, when we preach, when we put small groups together. But so often what happens is that we can turn inward focused, mm-hmm. right? Instead of being outward focused, we turn inward focused. And once a small group or Sunday school class or a church turns inward, mm-hmm. it is really hard then to break free from that. Right. So we've got to find you know ways to continue to push back against that in our preaching, in our teaching, in mm-hmm. the culture that we're building to really make sure that we're invitational, inviting people to be transformed by Jesus. I think I think we have to ask for flexibility too on in, on behalf on behalf of some of our our folks, our groups. We have designated hours for certain groups they meet. Hey, listen, we need to open up some opportunities for folks that are not here. Think about the thing that drew you to the church. If if you just stop for a minute 
and we ask folks, I mean, even as a staff member, the thing that drew me here was it was warm and welcoming when I came for my visit. I was like, man, this is a, a great place I can see us doing life here. If we challenge our group members and those that are leading those groups to think back on their first time or their first month, what was it that made you stick? And how are we continuing to develop that? How are we continuing to welcome people in? I think if we, if we live life looking at the things that propelled us to stay, it'll help us to, to find people, to move them from the street to the seat. Yeah. That's, a, that's our goal. Um, and I think it has everything to do with how we view the gospel. The gospel comes with a house key, right? We read yeah. that book, and it's all about showing hospitality to the outsider, welcoming them in, saying, come do life with us. And I've been challenged in this role, even leading a community group for a couple of years I've had folks around me say, listen, I've invited so-and-so. Are you okay with that? The very fact they have to ask me if I'm okay with that makes me think, maybe I'm not as open to that as I should be. So I've I've got folks around me in community that are pushing me in that arena to be more welcoming, which I appreciate. I need more people to do that. So that leads us right into uh, this message from this past Sunday. It was a busy Sunday. Had a lot of things going on. It was so much fun, though. Uh, being able to to share the pulpit. Thank you for giving me the opportunity here. And I heard Eastmont went really well. It's uh, fun to be over there and, uh, yeah. you know, getting to see what God's doing and meeting so many new people and just the tremendous things that are happening. It was it was great to be there. Good. And, and I know uh, as we as we continue to walk the road, looking forward to having Pastor David back in the pulpit this week. Um, we just mentioned invitational community and welcoming the outsider. So just a, just a question for, for us, looking back on Ruth chapter 2, that was a, a big theme from this passage, the outside person being welcomed in to this, uh, to this uh, community that was gleaning from the fields, this, this need to, to feed themselves. Um, what was significant about her movement to the field? Like there, Ruth made a decision, and she, she took a step. What was so significant about that as you prepared yeah, I was just thinking about her faith, the faith mm-hmm. that would have been required for her to come back with Naomi from Moab. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that faith is an active faith. And mm-hmm. I went over and uh, looked at uh, the, the you know Hall of Faith there in Hebrews right. chapter 11. And you see every time that somebody's mentioned for their faith, it always connected with an action, mm-hmm. right? They, mm-hmm. they did something that demonstrated that faith. And so one of the things that Ruth did was that she went out into the field. She didn't sit at home hoping that food would show up by her door, you know, she went out and worked. She went out and put herself out there, trusting that God would provide. Right. um, But putting herself out there in order to receive what God was going to do. And so we just kind of walked through that a little bit, Mm -hmm. talking about how our faith has got to be active. It's Mm -hmm. not a passive faith. It's a, it's a proactive faith. So how does this work? So between an active faith where we demonstrate our trust in what God's going to do, how does he respond? How do you see him respond in this passage? What is proven true in your life? Well, here you see him respond by, you know, coordinating uh, while the right. text makes it you feel like, and I'm sure this is As just it part happened. of the, yeah, the right. author's uh, kind of intent is to make you feel like Ruth just, you know, happened to show up in there <laughs> right, and right. Boaz just happened to come to the field that day. But really what we're seeing is God's orchestrating a plan, mm-hmm. and he's bringing together this narrative, this beautiful picture that he's trying to show, mm-hmm. um, ultimately, that leads us to Christ. But what we see is, is uh, Ruth going out into the field, anticipating mm-hmm. the provision of God. She doesn't know how he's going to provide. Mm-hmm. She doesn't even know what he's going to provide. Right. But she knows that he's going to provide. And that's how, really, we ought to approach life, you know, mm-hmm. is when God opens doors, mm-hmm. right? When God is... is moving us in a direction. We, we don't know how that's going to happen, right? right? That's what, when we talk about being a faith walker, mm-hmm. like, do I, can I trust God with the unknown? Like, that's the whole point. If, if you already knew what was going to happen, it requires no faith. If you already knew how God was going to provide, it requires no faith. What it look like 10 years from now. Right. right. But yeah, if you sure. know who God is, then you know he is a provider. Mm-hmm. And so you go out into the field waiting for him to provide, mm-hmm. being prepared for, for him to give whatever he's going to give or to do whatever he's going to do. So it just comes with that anticipation mm-hmm. and that activity of being ready to receive it when it comes. So good. So now you see she's, she's new to the area. She doesn't belong with this group of people. She shows up anticipating what God's going to do. In rides Boaz, um, a big, big moment. In the book, we, we finally see the Redeemer, the Kinsman Redeemer, show up. We're going to see some more next week, or this coming Sunday, but 
movements of faith when we when we step out you you said uh, we we do so in anticipation expecting the god who promises to provide protect to care for his people um, even us today when we step out on that on that faith in a movement of faith we anticipate him being involved do you think the text kind of lent itself toward I'm, i'm hoping the person that sees me doing this will allow me to continue. There's, there's almost this, I'm, I'm hoping that he'll look on me with favor. That's what she says. I hope I will find favor in his eyes. Do you think she had any anticipation it would be him? It would be Boaz specifically? Well, I think, you know, the text also kind of lends us to believe that um, there was an understanding from Naomi because Boaz knew enough about the situation right. to know uh, that there was a need, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, I think that God is, was orchestrating those events mm-hmm. um, in order to show Ruth and to demonstrate to Ruth that he he really will meet her at her knee. Right. He really will provide. It, if it had not been that uh, that way, it, it could have very well been another way. But God was orchestrating a certain plan. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, you can't second guess the Bible or say, you know, it's not choose your own adventure. Right. Like, well, right. if Boaz doesn't show up, you know, then what? turn this to page. Right. Because he does. And God's always faithful to provide. Mm-hmm. So in that provision, we see Boaz show up. He welcomes her to the table. Probably the, one of the coolest sections of the whole passage. I've read Ruth a couple times and, and heard it preached. But maybe we get to that moment when he says, come sit at the table and dip your morsel in Mm -hmm. the wine. And then he offers her the roasted true hospitality, true hospitality, welcoming her to the table. Um, my mind and, and all my reading in the, in the gospels take me to Jesus welcoming others to the table. I have this picture in my brain of the Lord's supper where they're dipping the bread in the, in the cup and, and they're sharing a meal together, but also, um, when he provides for, the thousands, the multitude, mm-hmm. when he feeds them, she goes away satisfied, um, physically satisfied, but she goes away with a harvest, and she she comes back. So, um, what were the effects? Looking at the end of chapter two, getting ready for chapter three, the effects of her faith, her movement of faith. What would you say are the big ones, the big effects? You know, she's obviously we're going to move into chapter three, and we're going to see this relationship mm-hmm. developed much, much deeper <laughs> right. in chapter three. But here you see this, this welcoming of Ruth into the, into the community, community, this yeah. is like the invitational community, inviting her in. Right. The outsider has a place at the table. Mm-hmm. And you just, for me, I just see the gospel mm-hmm. all over this. You know, that's the outsider now has a place at the banqueting table, yep. right? The one yep. who doesn't belong, the one who is a sinner has a place at the mm-hmm. seat of holiness, Right with the holy God at the mm-hmm. holy table, and and the only way that happens is because of the grace that mm-hmm. Jesus bestows upon us. Well, the only reason Ruth has a seat at the table is because Boaz extends invitational community mm-hmm. and grace towards her to bring her in mm-hmm. and to care for her when she's not able to care for herself. And he, and he made the movement right. He, he, he invites is. her in. Right, right. The the one who is. Um, you know, in the position of authority or power, so often is the one that must initiate that bringing of people mm-hmm. in, right? Because the, the person on the outside doesn't feel like they can do that, right? Right. Although we're going to see now next week that Ruth is going to <laughs> There's return an open door the now. favor. That's right. right. So she's now feeling pretty comfortable in the house of Boaz. That's and right. She's thinking, I could like to move in over here. That's it. So I'm going to make myself comfortable if I right. can. So uh, that's what we have to look forward to this, this coming Sunday, Ruth Chapter 3. So I hope you'll stick around and, and stay tuned. Whether you're watching online or joining us in person for worship at either campus, we are so glad you're here. Do me a favor. Go down and click on the like button. Subscribe to this podcast. We'd love to see you continue to come back and partake of this content. We love putting this together. It's a blast to get together every week. Yeah, we look, as my kids would say, smash that like smash button. Smash that like button. That's right. Give us some subscribers. We'd love uh, to connect with you some more. We look forward to seeing you soon. Let's continue to be the church. Have a great day. Thank you.